Prince of Persia franchise. Originally, I wasn't going to do this until I had gotten and played Rival Swords in the 2008 reboot of Prince of Persia, but I've been waiting for them to come from my contact in America for about a year now, so I figured I was just going to do these six, and then if those two games ever come through, I'll do addendum videos to this one. I'll start with the concept, since that hasn't changed much over the course of these six games. I mean the very core. You take on the role of a young man in Persia. Technically he isn't the prince the first time we meet him, I think. I believe he becomes the prince of Persia at the end of the first game. He's a very agile and fast young man. And he knows his way around a sword. All six games have you maneuvering, running around, jumping, avoiding traps, and engaging enemies in sword fights. The feeling of being in an action-adventure flick is very nicely emulated. That, or being the hero of a legend of a powerful young fighter. The focus lies mostly on the traps and finding your way through the many levels. There is combat in all of the games, but other than Warrior Within, the ratio is definitely in favor of dodging traps and both finding your way and actually getting. You know, maybe you can tell that you're supposed to jump from this one platform to the other, but it might still take you several tries. There's a bit of an emphasis on the prince's vulnerability. He's not weak, but you do get the sense that this world he is in, which is much like our own, but you know, there's magic, there are supernatural aspects, could very well kill him if he isn't careful. And obviously as you play, you will die countless times. There's also a nice emphasis on realism. I'll get into this more in the specific reviews, but other than the magic, this really does feel like the real world. Right from the start, the focus was on making this feel not like a video game. These games don't really have a lot of replayability, though. That's it for the concept. Moving on to the original Prince of Persia, 1989. I grew up on this game. I mean, I'm from 86 myself. So I was maybe seven years old when I started playing this. This and a handful of other games shaped my perception of what good games are like. However, even without the goggles of nostalgia, this is a really good game. And not just for its time either. It's not gonna hold up to today's market, of course. It's 20 years old. But the gameplay remains pretty entertaining. And it was ahead of its time in several areas. The backstory is nice and simple. It's a bit like Aladdin. Now, I haven't read, you know, A Thousand and One Nights and such, but in Disney's Aladdin was not the first to come up with this idea, and neither was this game. While the Sultan of Persia is away, his Grand Vizier, Jafar, demands that the Sultan's daughter, the Princess, marry him within an hour. And if she doesn't, he will kill her. Now, the Grand Vizier practices magic, so understandably, the situation will require a hero to rescue the princess. Enter a nameless young man who's recently fallen in love with the princess. We don't find out an awful lot about him, certainly not in this game, there's more in the second one, but basically the Grand Vizier knows and probably realizes that this is indeed a threat. So he throws him into the dungeons and that's where you start. You see yourself as the young artist, soon to be known as Prince, being tossed into a dungeon, the gate slamming shut behind him. Your first mission will be to simply find a sword, and through the first level, you'll figure out how the basic controls work. The game will expand on this, and you'll definitely be asked to do more difficult maneuvers later. But by the time you've completed the first, you have an understanding of 
how far a running jump will take you, how far a standing jump will take you, how fast you do various moves. And just before you complete the level, you'll get your first lesson in fencing. The fencing was always one of the things I loved about this. You know how typically in games, when you have a sword, you just hack and slash with it? And regular enemies might be easy enough to take out like that, but boss enemies you might not be able to hit at certain times for no good reason. Or how about, and this was especially true of the time when this game came out, when enemies are hit, they'll flash, blink a bit, to show that, ah, you hurt them. Maybe the same for your character as well. Not so in this game. Jordan Mechner, the man behind it, had some different ideas. When you strike with the sword, one of three things will happen. You'll hit, the enemy will move backwards and you won't hit, or the enemy will parry. And all of those three things are true of when others try to hit you as well. And do note that moving backwards isn't always going to save you because you may back right off an edge or something and even if you do manage to grab a hold, you're not going to get to climb up because the other guy is going to be standing there and the moment you start to move up, he's going to slice at you and that's it, that's all she wrote. Now, parry basically means that you'll block their strike with your own sword and sometimes a parry can be followed up by a strike of your own because they just put a lot of effort into a strike, it missed, and you now, for a second, or really a fraction of a second, have an opening to strike at them. Later enemies get good at multiple strikes in a row, and you may have to parry several times, and you may also find yourself fighting against someone who won't go for the first strike, who'll wait for you to strike so that they can parry it and then strike you back. It's all about strategy and timing. I like to compare it with a game of chess, only with a very distinct time limit on it. If you just rush at your opponent and strike as much as you can, you're going to die. Maybe not early on, but you're gonna need to get good at this before you can complete the game. And it's very much worth it, trust me. If you like fencing, it is so much fun. The realism is high already in this game. I already mentioned that you can... I also just love that enemies aren't randomly walking back and forth or jumping up and down as we know from games around that time. They're standing there waiting for you. They're waiting for someone to try to break out of this prison. The realism is high already in this game. I already mentioned that you can accidentally go off an edge, but then grab, hold on, just like in real life if you're fast enough, but that it also won't save your life if there's someone standing up there waiting to get a chance to strike at you. You have health, and if you drop a certain distance, you'll lose maybe one point of your health. If you drop too far, you'll simply die. The deaths are also very realistic and quite gory. I think it's really worth noting that of all six games, this is by far the goriest. The second continues that tradition somewhat, though. I mentioned traps. One of the most common is spikes. Basically, if you see a tile in the floor with holes in it, that means that spikes are going to shoot out from there when you pass over it. And I mean, regardless of if you jump across it, if it's several stories down, but still on the same screen, or if you walk through it. That's right, the best way to get through one, if it's in front of you, if you can't jump above it, is simply to slowly walk through it. If you try to run, they'll hear your footsteps and wait for the exact moment and the spikes will go up and what will happen is you'll literally see these spikes protruding out from the prince's body, bloody wounds 